Let's see, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is December 4th of 2018. And I believe it's yesterday that SpaceX uh, went up into space and delivered 64 satellites in orbit at one time. So a bunch of those were amateur radio satellites. They're uh, these 64 satellites that were launched are, I think they're called cube stats or whatever. They are extremely small, but with the type of electronics and stuff that we have nowadays, you can pack into one of these things unbelievable uh, amounts of stuff. And uh, so there are already, there have been for, well, I started shortwave listening in 1955. When Sputnik 1 went up, I tracked it. What was that, 1957 or? Can't remember now. And I got a verification card from the USSR. Of course, I'm sure they issued that to, to even, you know, anybody who wrote to them, I'm sure could get the verification card. But it was supposed to be that, you know, proof that I had. Then later, the USX, uh, or the United States uh, Explorer 7. I forget the date on that. We could do a search, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to guess 58, 59, I don't know. Um, I would fall asleep with the headphones on, and then in about 90 minutes, it would, it would wake me, you know, wake me up the beeping, and then others. And then I used to listen to uh, <clears throat> when Mercury 7 astronauts, the space comm communications on shortwave radio where they were communicating and then they were they were calling the satellite or they calling the uh, spacecraft when it returned and so so I've been interested in all of this stuff and I'm, <coughs> and I'm an amateur radio operator and amateur radio we've we've had a bunch of uh, satellites in orbit for a long time that we have uh, that we have I haven't I mean really been involved in it but uh, the CNN article, you know, said 66. So I decided to pop over here to Amstat uh, UK, which they have an excellent site. I'll try to put links to all this below. Um, I'll try to put links to all this below. I have, uh, I think I've got the, uh, Microphone problems fixed okay for right now. Let me, uh, I watch Twit a lot. Let me go to the menu though so you're not distracted. Uh, let's see, it's going to be cold today in uh, Fort Worth. Alexa. What's the weather forecast for today? In Fort Worth, it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today, you can look for mostly sunny weather with a high of 49 degrees and a low of 30 degrees. So let's go to, um, excuse me, breakfast. I just had a hot dog, actually a sausage. And I cut off too much cheese. Um, there it is, hidden behind the microphone. I'll try to put links as below, copy and paste. Uh, a space flight. Carrying amateur radio satellites launched from SpaceX Falcon 9 Monday. What is today? Tuesday, okay. And uh, it says watch the launch. Okay, we don't need to do that. Plan to launch 64 small satellites from 17 countries on this mission. Some with amateur radio, amateur radio payloads. 
a complete list can be found. Okay, so we'll go here. I'm not going, I'll just put, you'll get these links. So, uh, 51 different countries representing 14 different countries on the SSOA mission. There are 16 micro stats as well as dozens of cube stats. I'm not sure the difference between in size between the micro stats and the cube stats. Oh. Okay. Let's see. So uh, you can stop and pause this, or I'll put try to put the links below. Mission management, mission integration. Okay, list of the payloads on the space flight. Okay, I don't think these are just, uh, okay, these are not all ham radio satellites here. So these, this is all of them. So I guess this will be 63 of them. And uh, uh, payloads, payloads from the United States, Australia, Italy, ne Netherlands, Finland, South Korea, Spain, Switzerland, United Kingdom, Germany, Jordan, Kavistan, Thailand, Poland, Polish, you're able to launch satellites? Just kidding. Uh, Canada, South Africa, Brazil, and India. Okay. Um, so let's go back here. Four microstats, <coughs> microsatellites, including ESEO carrying an AMSTAT UK. Amateur Satellite, UK organization. Fun Cube, four transporters, transponder, were deployed. Uh, 60 cube stats, including Jordan's, now these are ham radio satellites. 60 cube stats, including Jordan's JY1 SAT, carrying a Fun Cube 6 transponder and capable of transmitting slow scan digital video. Okay. Uh, now there's a link there. I'm not going to go to that right now, or you can go to it. I'll put the, try to put the link. Um, another link. Let's see. F5. Uh, I think that's France. F5GVA has made available Doppler. Oh no, that's okay. He's made it. That's another that's a frequency charts produced by. Okay, here are there some frequency charts. I don't have any of my ham radios over here right now. I don't have the frequencies put in. Oh, this is an excellent chart here uh, from Germany, I believe. I think DK3WN and. Uh, Oh, this is a lot of work. He, the guy has done a... I used to do... Uh, put this information out a long time ago. Well, of course, there was a lot fewer. Well, there was most none. I used to put this out in mimeograph form to uh, a publication that I put out. And also, I did a radio program uh, broadcast over shortwave radio from WRUL radio twice, well, two or three times a week, depending on atmospheric conditions. And I, that was uh, Limo, Limo, uh, Elmo Melton, and I forget his call sign, produced a 45 RPM record, which nobody probably in the live now knows what our 45 RPM records are. 
exaggerating a little bit, called The Sounds of Space. And every week I would play one clip that he had put on, with his permission. And that, I was in, lived in Kansas City, Missouri then, and he also lived in, well, I'm not sure if it was Kansas City, Missouri, or Overland Park, or in that area. Very nice guy. I'm sure he passed away because I was very young and uh, he was very old. And now I am very old. If you happen to have some information, I'd like to remember him and post it on my blog and whatever. If you happen to have any information about Emil Melton and the sounds of space, but he did. Excuse me. He was so good that in the beginning, when NASA couldn't find some of their satellites, they, he contacted them and told them where their satellites were. Anyway, this is excellent. I hope to get this. I'm trying to leave these browser windows open so when I make, well, I'll make sure you get the try to make sure you get the links. Back to here. Forgot where I was. Okay, that's up. I was here. Satellites known to have amateur radio payload payloads are. And uh, down like is 440, actually 436.500 CW, one watt output. Here's another one that is uh, 437.250. Here's a another one. These are satellite ham radio satellites that just got launched. Downlink is on 400. If you have a scanner, a regular scanner, and especially if you have an outside antenna, uh, you can try to pick up some of these on a regular scanner. Uh, I live in an apartment on the ground floor, so I don't even have an external antenna. But some of these are able to be picked up just on a my handy talkie. Well, not these because they just got launched. I I don't even know where my handy talkies are. But uh, you might try, if you have a scanner, maybe you have been listening to your local police and fire and stuff like that, and maybe they've moved off a of frequency or it's encoded or something and you don't have anything to listen to. You could punch in some of these frequencies and just turn the volume up. And um, Okay, ESOE. <clears throat> uh, down link is 437. Megahertz. <clears throat> Trans the uplink is 1,263.5. A revised downlink of on two meters has been coordinated. That's 145. Point I'm not going to give you all these frequencies, here, but I'm just going to put out a few so people get an idea, especially if you're sitting at home with a scanner or something. It's on two meters of 145.895 megahertz. Uh, coordinated for FM voice, and then there's uh, telemetry also. Uh, let's see the next one. Two meters down. Fox one C. Two meter down FM voice. The next one Japan. Um, one forty-five point eight forty two meter, and. Uh, Uplink range is uh, 435.100 to 435.120. What they're doing is actually transmitting a band, not just a single frequency, but a little band. Uh, so anyway, uh, K2SAT, downlink is 440, uplink is 440, data is... Uh, 2404.0. Uh, FM repeater uplink is at 
on two meters at 145.980. So I'm not going to keep listening because there's a bunch of these, but I'll put the link. And while I'm scrolling this, I guess I could take my picture off and, well, never mind. I think I'm in love. I was a, mon a volunteer monitor, by the way, for the Federal Communications Commission. I forget when. I think I might have told that story. Anyway, that is about all I wanted to... Well, let me tell you, because I always do. I just changed my monitors again. That's, that's from yesterday or from this morning. I have uh, let's see here. Whoops, that's not the I can't I can't move that one. Well I could, but I did have my long monitor. That was all I had for a few hours or a day. I now I put my four K monitor here but it is in uh, 1080p mode. I'm not using the 4K. But it's a dual, I can, my computer is dual boot. I can boot up into Linux uh, or into Windows 10. And when I boot up into Linux, I have this come up in 4K. But for the work I'm doing now in Windows 10. So this is a 4K monitor, 1080p mode. And over here, the reason it makes it easier, over here I have the program that I'm using to record this screen and the audio and control the audio and that type of stuff. That's over here. I can keep it open. I can look at it. I can uh, do something like that and do it, control it over here. And uh, But this is the screen that's being sent out to you all, this monitor right here. And when I'm using the, just a wide monitor by, by and trying to use this to do that, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's hard, but <clears throat> this way I can very easily I, I, to just do which one I want to record, display one or display two. Uh, and it gives me a lot of uh, a lot of options. So uh, so there are two monitors, and you can see the microphone here that I'm using. Um, that's uh, that is about That's about it. Oh, the, the uh, cameras. This is the Logitech Brio or however. I never have figured out how to. And uh, the other is, this is Logitech. And this is the other Logitech camera that, <coughs> that's sitting on the monitor up there. I finally, on my which, oh, okay, I finally got the app installed on here so that I can control There we go. I was waiting for the display didn't come on. Now I touch the IP so it, you know. Um, so I now have the app 
on my cell phone so that I can control this. So I may be trying to play with uh, maybe a, a video, maybe not the next one, but one of them coming up. I'll probably be playing with that. I'll have that camera set up someplace and with my cell phone zooming in and out and doing a few things with that and we'll see how that goes. The problem is uh, in order to hook it up I have to use well there's a lot of devices you could I'm using the cam whoops okay cam link use the cam link that goes into USB and then goes into the, my cameras G7 now not all cameras you can do this with so if you do decide to get a cam link make sure you check ahead of time to make sure your camera is one the G7 Panasonic G7 is there's very few of the Panasonic I know the G7 does so it's not a whole bunch of uh, and uh, so make sure that you know it works for you so I'll probably be playing with that it's kind of flaky it's giving me some problems so we'll see how it goes now but I want to thank you very much for watching let me do a little advertising for myself right here I've been uh, blogging since 1982 and been doing all kinds of stuff since like I said tracking earth satellites in the early days um, all type all types of stuff so you'd think I'd be smarter by now wouldn't you after all those years I think I actually have brain cells are probably dying I think I'm probably getting dumber anyway thank you very much for watching